Welcome to On Security. Conversations with the world's leading security technologists. Brought to you by I don't think there's much resistance at all from the actual testers. Um, I think that the resistance comes more from management saying, you know, we don't have time to do this. Um, man, you know, a lot of these problems with security end up being management problems because management allocates how much time you're going to spend on different things. And, um, you know, quality is one of those things where someone makes a decision, you know, how much quality do we really need? No one fixes all the bugs in their software. They fix the important bugs and they leave other bugs in the software and they hope that no one really gets upset about it. Well, when you take that approach to security, um, you're shipping software with security bugs in them and people are going to find them. Um, so it really it comes down to a management decision is how much, how much time and energy are, are we going to invest in being proactive and finding problems before we ship the software. Um, yes, yes, it's been kind of slow in coming. Um, I think I started looking at software security back in the mid 90s, and back then it was, you know, it was almost like a hobbyist thing. Um, people said, hey, let's, you know, let's find security bugs in software. It's kind of fun, let's find them. It's kind of, you know, exploring technology in a different kind of way. Um, and, uh, you know, we would go and we would talk to the software vendors like a Microsoft and say, you know, we found this problem in your software. And initially they're like, yeah, who cares? You know, we, we ship our software with bugs. Everyone does. It's like, no, but this is a security bug. You know, someone can take over someone else's machine by doing this. You probably need to fix that. And then it took like a couple of years of learning curve of kind of saying, you know, hey, general public, this is a problem and Microsoft's not fixing it. And so I think they were the ones that were under the fire first. And so they were the ones that f first understood how serious it was and started coming around. And um, you know, it's taken them a long time, but they probably have one of the best um, attitudes about building secure software. Um, a lot of other companies, especially smaller software companies, um, still don't really pay it much attention and they just hope they can sort of muddle by and no one will notice that they have security problems. And then when they have a security problem, they'll just try to fix it as quickly as possible and doesn't, th th hope it doesn't, doesn't hurt. But that's, you know, that's not the right way to you know, build anything. I think, I think the, sort of the worst case scenario is you, know, you, 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 know, you ignore security as you're, as you're building your software and you end up with you know, popular, you know, a popular piece of software that all of a sudden overnight, you know, all of a sudden everyone's using. Um, you know, it's amazing how quickly technology gets adopted. You can go from you know, 1,000 users to you know, hundreds of thousands or even millions of users overnight when you have some sort of really cool, free, downloadable thing. Um, now all of a sudden you have all these desktops that have your software running on it. If it's got a security vulnerability in it, um, the way things work today is there's a whole criminal element out there, which th what they want to do is they want to break into lots of machines. They want to use them, you know, for their own criminal activity, whether it's, um, you know, using them for spam, using them for denial of service attacks against other 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 people, um, using them for, um, you know, just stealing people's usernames and passwords. I mean, there's a whole market out there of if there's a vulnerability, there's a whole bunch of people set to exploit it for criminal intent. So a software developer basically um, ends up, you know, with, with, you know, his software being the reason all these people are, have all these headaches. You know, there's, there's going to be grandmothers calling you on the phone saying, you know, all my files are deleted. I don't know what's going on. It just becomes a support nightmare. Um, and over time, if you don't really change your tune, um, you know, you just get known as a poor, poor quality 
software company. I, I think that um, there, there are cases where um, you know, sort of prolonged uh, poor security quality has gotten people to shift over to other technologies. Um, it, it's, it's most likely in sort of open source where it's easy to shift. You, have, you don't have a big contract. I mean, that's one of the things a lot of these companies have monopolies or virtual monopolies in certain, certain spheres. So having big security problems, it's almost like they can get away with it because it's hard for their customers to shift. But there was this um, mail, um, one of the main mail server programs called SendMail um, back in the late 90s, as late as, you know, like 2000 or so, had, um, you know, constantly was the cause of people's companies getting broken into because mail is something where you have to externally expose that so people can send mail into your company. People break into that machine. They use that as a stepping stone, break into the company. It's a pretty serious um, uh, situation and uh, a lot of people just got fed up with send mail and they moved over to other mail servers. There's one called Postfix and there's one called QMail. These pieces of software were written specifically to be secure. Um, so I, I just think that's a good example that if you let your security problems, you know, if you don't address them, eventually your customers are going to leave and move somewhere else. For more information, visit onpodcastweekly.com and subscribe to all our podcasts. Brought to you by the publishing imprints and information portal of Pearson Education.